Hey, what's up, guys? So, uh, I'm sure you guys, if you follow my channel, you know at least a little bit about Jordan Peterson. Well, there's another streamer. Uh, his name is Destiny, or he goes, I don't know what his real name is, but he goes by Destiny. Some of you probably heard him before, too. You know, he likes to debate a lot. He likes to you know, use big words and talk really fast to come off as smart. And you're going to see him in a debate, just some clips. I'm not going to show the whole debate. I'm not even going to play this whole video because I don't, I don't like playing videos for you guys that are too long because I know it's a little bit laggy, but uh, I do want to just expose Destiny just being destroyed once again by Jordan Peterson. So let's take a look and then we'll talk about it after like usual. This is the sources, by the way, it's Sky News. This is a Rita Panahi show. She's pretty good. I mean, I don't watch much Australian news, but once in a while they put out, you know, lefties losing it, which is like the, the segment that this video is under. All right, let's have a listen. We just got another one of the hottest years on record. How many times are we going to have another hottest year on record? How many times are we going to have an increase of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere before we're finally like, okay. I don't know. And the, the reason I don't know is because it depends. The scientific answer to that question depends precisely on the time frame over which you evaluate the climate fluctuation. And that's right. actually an intractable scientific problem. So you might say, well, if you take the last hundred years, this variation looks pretty dismal. And I'd say, well, what if, what if you took the last 150,000 years? And I've saved the best for last. Here, Dr. Peterson explains what the climate catastrophists do. Their communist-like compassion narrative, which is anything but. Sit back and enjoy. I think it's pretty undeniable at this point that there is an impact on climate across the planet. I, just I don't think know. that's highly deniable. We have no idea. What it's highly debatable, that's for we sure. We don't know where the carbon dioxide is from. We can't measure the warming of the oceans. We have terrible temperature records going back 100 years. Almost all the terrestrial temperature uh, 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 detection sites were first put outside urban areas, and then as and say, right, and then you have to correct. Then you have to correct for the for the movement of the urban areas, and then you introduce an error parameter that's larger than the purported increase in temperature that you're planning to measure. This isn't data. This is guess. And there's something weird underneath it. There's something weird that isn't oriented well towards human beings underneath it. It has this guise of compassion. Oh, we're going to save the poor in the future. It's like that's what the bloody communists said. And they killed a lot of people doing it. And we're walking down that same road now. With this Especially if you're in Canada. You know, we're so compassionate that we care about the poor a hundred years from now. And if we have to wipe out several hundred million of them now, well, that's a small price to pay for the future utopia. And we've heard that sort of thing before. And the alternative to that is for is to stop having global level elites plot out a utopian future or even an anti-dystopian future. And that's exactly what's happening now with organizations like the WEF. And if this wasn't immediately <laughs> impacting the poor yep. in a devastating manner, I wouldn't care about it that much, but it is. You know, I watched over the course of the last five years, the estimates of the number of people who were in serious danger of food privation rise from about 100 million to about 350 million. That's a major price to pay for a little bit of what, what would you say for for progress on the climate front that's so narrow it can't even be measured. I don't think the increase in, in hungry people on the, in the planet is because of climate policies. Why not? Think, because, because I don't think that countries in Africa are being pushed away from fossil fuels. I mean, most developed Of course countries. they are. They can't, even get, they can't even get loans from the World Bank to pursue, for, for, pursue fossil fuel development. And there's plenty of African leaders who are screeching at the top of their lungs about that because the elites in the West have decided that well, it was okay for us to use fossil fuel for, so that we wouldn't have to starve to death and our children had some opportunities. But maybe the starving masses that are too large a load for the world anyways shouldn't have that opportunity. And that's, that's direct policy from the UN fostered by organizations like the w, WEF. They're going to have to turn to renewables. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Isn't he magnificent? So, uh, yes, he is magnificent. I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson. I actually think I missed their first interaction, though. Let me go back here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Sorry about that. I, there was three interactions I wanted to play here, so let's play the the first one third. <laughs> Like, I could imagine somebody saying that, like, they don't trust, like, a large government. They think there's too much, uh, you know, prone to tyranny or something like that. But also be supportive of an institution like the Catholic Church, which is literally, you know, one guy who is a direct right, line to God. they can't tax. 
Um, well, I mean, and they don't have a military. <laughs> that is, they can't conscript you. For real, right? yeah. And they can't throw you in jail. That is true, yeah. Yeah, and see, that's... Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, you're comparing the government to the Catholic Church. I mean, listen, I, I've never met Destiny. I don't watch him that much. I don't really know. I know he's a, he's on the left, uh, clearly, but... You know, it's it's just funny because you know when you when you speak fast and you use big words, I think they use that tactic to try to intimidate their opponent. You're not going to intimidate Jordan Peterson. <laughs> it's just it's not happening. That guy is also very very incredibly smart himself, and I just wanted to play this because it just kind of shows you the kind of uh, the the narrative or the ideology of the left, and it can be exposed so quickly and so badly by someone who is as smart as Jordan Peterson. And, you know, it's just, I love seeing it. You know, it's the, these people, they're, you know, these climate activists that are, you know, the doomsday preppers, uh, what's, you know, the just stop oil group, you know, they're, it's just insane. Like they're just protesting, which is doing nothing. They've been doing this for a while. It's never done anything, but caused havoc. They're blocking off roads taking it even longer for people to get to work. Now they're exposing even more carbon emissions. It's like, wait a minute. Your protests are actually having reverse effects when you cause more traffic, more people on the road for a longer time, burning up more fuel. Right? Like uh, if you're on the left, your, your ideologies are probably going to come more from your heart. Right? Where if you're more on the right or in the middle or independent libertarian, your thoughts probably come from your mind and you analyze those thoughts because sometimes you will have an emotional reaction because you're not going to like something. But that doesn't mean if you hear something that you don't like, you just go, Oh, that's not true. You have to think about it and then analyze it and decide and watch both sides of the aisle and see their opinion on it and then decide for yourself. And sometimes you are going to have to change your mind. I've had to do that many times. I used to be firmly on the left. I changed my mind. Because the left is not what it used to be. The left is now Destiny and people like Vosh and Hassan Piker. And it's just like, whatever that is, I don't want to associate with it. And I'm glad that people like Jordan Peterson continue to expose this kind of nonsense. Anyway, thanks uh, for watching, guys. That's going to be it for this video. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll be back later. Take care.